Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, your daily fix of football chat on STV. The main talking points tonight, Rangers manager Mark Warburton says he's flattered to be linked with the Swansea job. Uh, Celtic are looking to extend the contract of Lee Griffiths and Alan Stubbs is calling on the SPFL to allow clubs to make more than three substitutions in the League Cup when it starts next summer. Just a few of the talking points I'll be discussing with Alan Ruff and our bootroom guest, I'm delighted to say is Darren O'D uh, and if I had to look at uh, the clubs that you're playing for now I'd say well fair play to you Darren you are putting in the miles Mumbai City mm -hmm. yeah no I uh, got an offer to go out there and uh, as I've shown in the past I'm willing to try new things and it was a great experience, I have to say. Yeah, I'd love to have been a fly in the wall when you actually sat down with your wife and said, look, <laughs> I'm thinking about India. Please tell me. She, she looked at you as if you were crazy. Yeah, I think she does. Yeah, she's nervous now what the next thing. <laughs> probably when I'm a free agent is the worst time. She doesn't know where I'm next. Uh, Ukraine, obviously America or Canada. And then Mumbai, it's, it's gone further afield. Maybe she thinks I'm trying to get away from her. I don't know, but... Uh, no, yeah, we'll see what's next. Yeah, the, the last time I think uh, Ruffy and I actually had a chat with you on the show, it was Donetsk and at a time when it was getting really scary. Yeah, it was, and the saddest part of all that was for me, I could just up sticks and leave, but the, the people were left there. and I'm led to believe I think the club is, is I say, extinct. I think it's gone out of business. Um, it was impossible for it to survive, so... Uh, yeah, it was disappointing, but it was a, a scary time for everyone, really. Yeah, I, I mean, players have uh, travelled uh, near and far uh, to get employment because, after all, it is a job uh, for many decades. But um, more and more, uh, like yourself, are starting to look farther afield, um, you know, to, to, to try and, uh, and get those different experiences. Is that, what, is that what drove you on, or was it mainly a, a case of maybe looking at what was happening here and it was, uh, you know, frustrating you? No, no, the, I've, I've spoken about it before. The thing was, I was probably spoiled as a kid growing up at Celtic and you're always challenging for a league, a cup. Um, I was lucky enough to win some and the, the buzz of it all was fantastic. But I felt when I played three years in the championship, you were just, a, you were just another number in the league, hoping that you'd get promoted. Um, the, the years I went down, I went to fantastic clubs. Where I was at Reading, who just got relegated a big budget. Ipswich, likewise, Leeds, a massive club. And you end up coming mid-table. And it, it was going through the motions, if you like. And I didn't enjoy it. Um, fantastic league, fantastic clubs. But I, that's what ended up opening up my eyes. And I thought, I'll, I'll see what else is out there. Is, is it something you would recommend to other players? Because we keep hearing about more and more players. The, the contracts are getting shorter. They're only getting year contracts. Is it something you would recommend for them to travel? Obviously not to some places, but uh, there are different styles of football out there. Yeah, I would, yeah. Um, and... Listen, you're, you're retired, at, people say 35, so you've, you've all your time to live at home and you might never get the opportunity to see different countries, different cultures and I've certainly seen a number of them now and who knows, um, I probably, if, if I had my way, I'll probably see a few more. Yeah, uh, is that your intention or is it to go back to India first and foremost to, to, to have another season with them? Uh, yeah, possibly, possibly. I don't know. Obviously, their league is, is short, a short league, so it wouldn't be till next summer I'd need to make that decision. Um, so it's possible I take something short term till till the summer, and then maybe go back. But likewise, I couldn't have predicted what I've done so far. So uh, who knows what kind of January? I can't do anything now till January anyway. So who knows what that bring? Yeah, and of course, managers, players uh, all watch the program uh, and will look on with interest. It, it, it would it be ideal for you if a if a Scottish manager comes in and says, "Look, can you help us out in a short term deal?" Is that something you'd be receptive to? Ideal for my wife, yeah. um, my family. Um, but my wife's fantastic, she, she kind of trusts me and, and knows what, well, she thinks I know what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe it's a, it would certainly be an option. Um, it would be an option that would let me enjoy football and enjoy being at home and being able to pick my daughter up from school and things like that. It's, it's something obviously I, I miss when I'm abroad, but uh, as I said, I, I couldn't even sit here and try to predict. I'm just back five days. I'll take a break, enjoy the Christmas, and I obviously will be be looking uh, in the meantime. But as I said, I can't do it until January first, anyway. Yeah, and your fitness as well. I mean, you don't look as if you've let yourself go the way Ruffy and I have just let it go. We were thinking about India, and then a number of things uh, threw us off. It talent for one. <laughs> 
No, yeah, obviously I've just finished the season of four months, uh, so yeah, I've, as fit as can be, match fit, so I'll kind of try to tick over now rather than taking a real break, I'll just tick over till till obviously I can I can join a club and, and hopefully that I'd, I'd like to have something lined up to, to start straight away in the new year rather than waiting. Um, I'll have my three weeks to kind of have a bit of downtime, but really to kind of just take over. Yeah, you're only 28. You, you, you know, you've had the, the international experiences as yeah. well. Uh, do you feel as if you're coming to a point where you're getting you uh, a better player uh, because of the you know the rich tapestry of the, the, the your experiences not only at home but abroad? Yeah, it's strange. Obviously, you'd say a defender, especially probably come into his peak years round about now, even even on to 29, 30. Um, yeah, that, I don't think that, that doesn't come into my head really. I'm just enjoy, I'm, I enjoyed my football for the last four months, and that's that's the main thing for me. Uh, as I said, I felt in the championship it was it was stale for me. Um, I was going through the motions. I, I always put it this way: I, I don't know how many games I played. Let's say 100 games in the championship. I can't remember one of them. I can barely remember an incident in games. It was just rolling in Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday feeling 70% fit all the time because you're just you're knackered really and you ask any championship player they say the same thing um, but I, I remember nearly every day training in India the different experiences even just the bus ride to train and the things you saw um, so that's what you want if you're not going to win medals you want memories and I realised when I left Celtic I wasn't going to play with Man United I wasn't going to play with Barcelona win win cups and leagues and I was lucky enough to do that Celtic, but re realistically you're not going to do it. There's only a very short number of players that manage to do it, so uh, yeah, that's probably why I ended up looking abroad. I mean, it's a tremendous lesson, mm -hmm. I think, uh, Ruffy. Um, you know, it doesn't matter how much money somebody will throw at you. Um, if you're not enjoying your football, that, that's a whole different issue. Yeah, it certainly is, but I think Darren's uh, explained there that uh, I, th I don't think there's enough uh, young people travel enough. I mean, as Darren said, seeing the world is incredible. I mean, I never did it at club level, but I certainly did it at international level, you know, playing, travelling around the world, you know, visiting countries, and as Darren says, it's an eye-opener of how other people live, and I think maybe more footballers should give it a bash. Yeah, and with that in mind, I'm surprised that you haven't contemplated America as well. I've played a year in Yeah, in but Toronto. I mean, in a per more permanent basis. Uh, yeah, I obviously went out for a year. I, did, I actually signed, I think it was a four-year deal. So the plan was to um, to stay out longer term. Um, but there was an, an offer then that came in Ukraine and the club and myself came to the agreement to, to go. And, and since then, that's part of the, probably the... The thing that's the most difficult is I was I'm constantly I'm moving club a lot, yeah. so there's a lot of uncertainty and obviously everyone wants to be settled. But part of that scene, different countries, it's part of the excitement, I suppose. So there's ups and downs to it. There's not it's not perfect going away to it's it's difficult. Um, but like the year I wasn't in Ukraine, I probably learned more in that year about myself and my football and improved in a year than I'd had in my whole career. Um, but yet there was plenty of downfalls to that. It was in a war zone at one stage, obviously. So. No, it's something I, I would recommend, yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you, the book is going to be an absolute cracker, <laughs> Dan, when you eventually sit down to uh, to write it. Um, uh, listen, you were in India, you caused a bit of a stir over here <laughs> while you were there. If you're yeah. going to give us a line, <laughs> you know, you'd be as well being in <laughs> India when you deliver it. Um, uh, of course, <clears throat> you know, the, the HMRC case with Rangers is still ongoing. Um, uh, and from the headline was that you thought that players like yourself who were involved who may have been denied potentially um, a, a title should be should be given those medals. Is that still your attitude to it or a, or has it been misquoted? Well, now I'm back in Scotland, I might change my opinion. <laughs> uh, no, 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 it wasn't misquoted at all. Uh, I believe if a club is caught cheating and it's that's the... They won by cheating. Then that's what should be done. Is is the titles taken away? But the players have the utmost respect for. I played against them, and they were fantastic players. Um, to represent a, a massive club like Rangers in honour for for most, and um, no, they don't deserve anything against them. And do I want the medals? No. Do, it's but I don't think it's down to me. I don't think it's down to Celtic. Um, I think it's what's right in football. If it, an individual sport, if they're caught cheating, the medals taken off them. Why would it be any different in football? Yeah. Um, but 
that's only one man's view. I'm sure there's plenty of different views in Scotland. And if anything, uh, Ruffy, there's a long, long way to go on it. And I think as Darren highlighted there, it's the clubs, uh, mm-hmm. you know, the fate of the club will be determined in this one. You know, and <clears throat> the players are a different ball game completely. Yeah, I think what we've seen through the, the years, that the rules are the rules, you know, and it doesn't matter who you are, if you break the rules, then you have to be punished. Yep, um, and of course... Listen, there's a long way to go in determining whether even titles will be on the table or medals. Um, but it was interesting just to set the record straight on it. Darren D with more football chat after the break. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's uh, football show. And no doubt tomorrow on the programme as we look ahead to the weekend's football, we'll also uh, look back on Celtic's game against Fenerbahce. Um, but tonight we've got Darren O'Dee, who's our guest in the boot room. Delighted to have him uh, back from India playing football and uh, still have boots will travel, I think is the only way to sum it up at the moment. Good to get an insight into uh, where footballers will get their education uh, and enjoy enjoy their game as well. Um, let's talk about some of the uh, stories from the news. First of all, Mark Warburton was speaking today. Of course, uh, Ruffy and I have got the Mark Warburton linked with a job uh, list. Uh, I'm sure it'll eventually get to Real Madrid at some point, but right now it's Swansea. Uh, this is uh, the Rangers manager's take on the latest link. No, it's, it's, it's compliments to the players. It's credit to them. The fact that you know any manager, any coach only ever gets linked to jobs. It's always flattering to be linked to jobs. And it only ever gets linked if we're winning games of football. Yeah, I think that's a good point. You get linked if you're winning games of football. But again, I maintain, Ruffy, as we have on this show uh, on a number of occasions, I think Mark Warburton's still got a job to do. Well, I thought Peter had already committed himself for the duration. You know, he said he's got a job to do there, and quite rightly, and he's going to see it out. You know, so I think if Man United come in, he'd have to turn that down as well. Yeah. You know, because he's got yeah, a job not, to do. So, try not to be <laughs> facetious now that it's just got to the ridiculous stage with him. He's, well, already, he's already hacked off with people linking him with yeah, these jobs. No, I, no. I just think he's still got... <laughs> although Brentford's good on the CV, I think Mark Warburton wants to go and do a good job at Rangers. And that's yeah, what but, it takes at another stage but, for Another stage further is uh, when the top clubs in England, you know, they identify what you've done in Europe, you know, what you've done uh, and how you've handled yourself. That's why we keep going on about Ronnie Delia's record in Europe. And that's where you get the big jobs. That's what these big clubs are looking for, how you obviously do it domestic level. But Europe seems to be the place. So if he hangs on in there and Rangers do get into Europe eventually, that's when his CV will go up. Yeah, and, and Darren, no disrespect to the, the current Rangers manager, but I think Swansea will have a list of other people who not only have applied for it but maybe a list of people that they want um, that might have a, a, a better CV let's be blunt about it yeah possibly yeah as he said he's he, the only club I, I can think of that he's worked at and, and did very well because obviously I played against Brentford last year a fantastic side played the right way I think he was a very good acquisition for Rangers um, but I think yeah it's 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 like you said, get into Europe and, and you're all of a sudden you're looking at jobs, whether it's Swansea, you could potentially go even higher than that. So I think probably he wants to stay at Rangers just now. I think he's saying that to everyone um, he's fed up with questions. But um, I think it's it's a good thing. If you're a manager and you're getting linked with jobs, it's a good thing. Yeah, uh, and the, uh, the manager himself not too happy with uh, the League Cup. I think uh, he feels as if that would be a hindrance to Rangers at that particular time when it's scheduled. Every manager's giving us their thoughts mm-hmm. on it, Ruffy. Even Alan Stubbs, uh, the, the Hibs manager's thrown in uh, another little caveat on this, which is quite simple. He feels as if mm-hmm. uh, there should be more than three substitutes allowed because it's almost like pre-season. Yeah, that, that, that. I wouldn't think many of the clubs would have a problem with that. I think it'd be a, a good chance to introduce maybe some players that the supporters don't get a chance to see at the beginning of the season. We keep saying, oh, you can't risk them when the season starts. So let's see them, what they're like and how they can handle a competition at the beginning. You know, and from Rangers' point of view, I can see why they're away because they would be organising glamour games and, and making money. You know, So that's something that's possibly getting taken away from them. But there, there's ways around all these things. But I think at this moment in time, we just have to be positive because we all like to see a bit of change. Yeah, um, what do you make of it all, uh, Darren? What's going on in in our game at the moment? You're obviously an, an outsider now looking in. Yeah, I thought I, I, I was in favour of all the, the league. I don't know, didn't know the ins and outs of it, but the fact that there was something do, done and, and been changed, I think it's quite obvious to everyone. Everyone's screaming for a new idea, um, and this is certainly new. It's it's never been done, and only time will tell will it work. But uh, I can understand. 
it'll suit some clubs better than it'll suit others. Uh, I can understand Rangers being frustrated with, as you said, they'll, they'll, they'll have glamour fixtures they could play elsewhere. And I uh, can also understand, certainly can understand, in pre-season it's very difficult to, to have players ready to play 90 minutes. Um, so I would, I would suggest having more than three subs is maybe a, a good idea. Um, but certainly, yeah, for, for Scottish football, something needed to be done and, and good on the people for, for making the decision. Only time will tell will it really work, but yeah, I'd, I'd like to think it will. You spend a lot of time, uh, obviously you mentioned the early days at Celtic as well. What's the perception now of our game, uh, not only down south but abroad? Truthfully, when I, I remember when I very first it shocked me because I wouldn't want to say arrogance, but at Celtic you do have a bit of arrogance that you're, you're Celtic football club. But the first time I went on loan to Reading, I was shocked at the lack of respect for the the, the league. Um, I remember sitting in you know, my first away game shouting for the, I don't know what Scottish game was on, to leave it on, and the lads were dismissing it sort of thing. Um, and, and I think obviously the, the whole Rangers thing hasn't helped. Uh, the, the kind of attraction from the outside, certainly, to Scottish football is the old firm. Um, and that obviously hasn't been about. So, uh, yeah, it, it isn't in a great position, if we're being completely honest. But these these ideas that have been implemented now are, are good um, and, and hopefully they work. And slowly but surely, things will get better. Yeah. Ultimately, e even at the tail end of your career as well, do you, do you see yourself coming back here because of your family ties? Yeah, yeah. It's got, uh, Glasgow's my home. Um, I've lived here since I've played with Celtic and I've never moved. I've always called this my home. So, um, yeah, whether it's at the tail end of my career, whether it's now, certainly I'd, I'd, I'd love to play in, again in, in Scotland. Um, but oh, that's not down to me, that's down to other people to, to obviously want me and then to come to an agreement. Loads of things can happen. But, uh, yeah, no, I'd certainly, I know the league up here as well as anyone uh, watch it and uh, no, I'd love to play in it again. Yeah, um, uh, and of course I've got to ask you about, uh, you've got family ties there in the Republic, suddenly the whole country looking towards the European Championships. Yeah, fantastic. I I didn't, I wouldn't have backed them um, with about four or five games to go. I didn't, didn't fancy them, I thought. I fancied Scotland, truthfully, um, and, and fair play. The, the result they got against Germany will go down in history. It was one of them games that you'll watch and you'll read about in 20 years' time. A uh, fantastic result. Obviously, Scotland slipped up, and um, no, the, the playoff. I thought they were they were much much better than Bosnia. Deserved to go through, and I know what it was like. I was in the squad for 2012, and it's just uh, it'll be absolutely brilliant for the country. They'll go there in numbers and uh, hopefully the team does better than, than we did in 2012. Did it come as any surprise to you what Martin O'Neill was going to achieve there? At the start, I, I, I fancied us, but as I said, midway through, they, I don't think Ireland have played well throughout the, the whole. I can't put even the Germany game at home, it, it was one of them free games. They defended brilliantly, but they, didn't, they haven't played well throughout the the campaign, um, but picked up important results. They've got real strong, strong squads with actually physically strong players um, and committed. And, and when you've got that and you've got a manager like Martin O'Neill, you've always got a chance. So, uh, no, I'd like to think they'll do well now at the Euros because we, we kind of, we were disappointed the way 2012 went. Yeah, here's a, an interesting line I picked up in the papers today, Ruffy. Uh, Jeff Brown uh, quoted as saying he's hoping that uh, Tommy Wright can go on to be the greatest ever manager at St Johnson by taking them to second in the table. Um, now, that just gives you an indication mm -hmm. of the change <coughs> days at St Johnson. Yeah, it certainly does. And uh, a remarkable man to beat, uh, Willie Ormond, I think it is, he would be, he'd be taken over from. He had a tremendous record up there in bygone days. I think St Johnson were always a team to fear. But certainly, no, everything he's done and obviously he's signed the new contract and the, the players, the, the team's playing well, and why not? You know, I, I, I can see a team like St Johnson winning another cup quite easily. Yep, yeah, and uh, I'm going to put this to you two guys because when I, when I suggested it to you earlier, Ruffy, you were slightly aghast by it, but uh, St Mirren and Partick Thistle are going to have an area where both sets of fans uh, will enjoy the game uh, together when they, uh, you know, come up against each other. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, you're right. slightly <laughs> caught out by that. Yeah, I would like to be. I would like to be in that in that part of the area when when Thistle notch their fourth goal and see what kind of reaction they get between <laughs> between the two fans. I'm sure uh, it'd be good. At the start. I mean, I'd love to think it would go. Tr I think it would go trouble free, but there would yeah. be the odd the odd one who maybe just spoil it. Yeah, I, I can't quite see it happening with a Celtic and Rangers match, Darren. But uh, you know, Ruffy's got this image as you can tell from the 70s where yeah. everybody meets in the middle and then there's a full <laughs> full scale riot. But uh, there are actually fans who like to go to games without fighting each other. Yeah, it's funny you actually see it down at uh, the Merseyside Derby. It's a very, very big derby. Very intense, but the families are intertwined with this Everton and, and Liverpool fans. So it obviously works elsewhere. So see what Scotland's like. Well, I was over in America for a year and I remember the owner of our club in Orlando saying we've got a sports bar downtown where the both sets of fans meet up and have a drink. Do you think that'd work back home with the Rangers and Celtic fans? Yeah. yeah okay. Well, let's give it a bash. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, I think you, you chose the right word, bash. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, great to hear from uh, Darren Adi. If you're a footballer, hopefully uh, you've got something from Darren travelling the world and uh, still enjoying playing football. Thanks to Darren from Ruffy myself. Thanks for watching.